And so what's going on everyone? My name is Kai, welcome to the channel. Consider subscribing, helps the channel grow. All right, my friends, so right now I am in Shinjuku, Tokyo, Japan. Look at this ridiculously cool building behind me. So cool. Guys, we are going to have a lot of fun today. I'm down here in Shinjuku because uh, I wanted to drop my girlfriend off uh, to get her hair lash extensions done. Um, and while I'm waiting for her, I'm gonna go out and explore. I'm gonna go to the Don Quixote down here. Last time I was in Shinjuku, I had a really good time. Uh, we're gonna check out some arcades while I'm here. Afterwards, uh, we're gonna head over to Akihabara, hang out there for a little while. Um, and then at the end of the vlog, we're going to go to this really beautiful park uh, that's right near my house. We haven't been to it yet, but the beautiful trees there, this beautiful scenery there, uh, beautiful flowers, beautiful gardens. It's going to be a lot of fun. So first thing that I'm going to do is walk all the way down there and there's a Don Quixote there. We're going to go in there, do a little bit of shopping and then uh, maybe grab some food. It's a wide open day. We're going to have a lot of fun. So stick with me. I hope you enjoy the vlog. Let's get right into it. All right, my friends, check out this ridiculously cool building. It's so huge, the camera really doesn't do it justice. But I just want to show you this beautiful area that I'm in. This is where we're headed. We're heading down there to do some shopping. All right, guys, so today is definitely a day where I should have uh, either worn sunscreen. Oh yeah, I definitely should have done that because it is hot as hell. I have a freshly shaved head. Look how shiny that head is. I've got a freshly shaved head, which means I am prone to getting a huge sunburn today. And because I'm wearing a trucker cap, I'll probably get a sunburn in the shape of an X pattern, which will be nice. Uh, oh, I wanna show you guys something. The Red Hot Chili Peppers. Red Hot Chili Peppers are coming to Japan on my birthday. So my girlfriend and I right now are trying to secure tickets for that. That will be a lot of fun. I would really like to see the Chili Peppers. I had a chance to see them a few years ago, but never materialized. So guys, I might be going to the Red Hot Chili Peppers concert. Very, very cool. It's on my birthday, looking forward to it. All right, um, when I find something more interesting, I will uh, show you, but I will also give you a, uh, a look around what's going on here. Beautiful area. All right, guys, talk to you All soon. All right, everyone. So I have made it to the Don Quixote, but this is a different Don Quixote. Um, it's very close to the other one, but uh, I've never been in here before. So hopefully I can find what I'm looking for. The reason I'm out here is today, today is because uh, the first time I came to Shinjuku, they uh, were doing a sale on the CBD that they had here. And that's a huge, huge help because everywhere else it's very expensive, but here it was only 500 yen uh, per container. So that was really good. So I'm looking for that in here. And then also I am looking for a, a specific little, I don't want to call it a toy. It's more like a, like an alarm. Um, but if you know the outro to my channel, the outro music to my channel, um, you'll know that little tune. And the tune comes from the, these little, uh, like basically when you walk into a store that plays, uh, so that's what I'm looking for. Hopefully I'll find it. If we find anything interesting, I'll let you guys One more thing before I go in. I am planning a firework celebration. For the last day that I'm here, I am planning a firework celebration. So stay tuned for that. No luck in there. No luck in there. I did remember though, there's a bunch of gashapon machines. So I still need to continue on my search for that specific gadget pond that I was looking for at the very beginning of the trip. If I would have known that I would have only seen that brand, that gadget pond one time for the entire trip, I would have bought, you know, I would have done it all then. But since then, not a single one. And I'm telling you guys, I've seen thousands of them. I've seen thousands of different gadget pond containers. And uh, I look in every one of them. I look in every one of them and I just, I just can't find it. Either way, um, so I'm in an area of Shinjuku 
that I am very much not familiar with. So, I'm gonna try and find my bearings. I know that, um, I know that from Shinjuku Station, I can, uh, I can find where I'm going from, from Shinjuku Station, but I'm not quite sure where I am right now. So, I think there's a subway entrance here. So I'm gonna go down into uh, into the station, and I'm gonna come out a different uh, a different exit, and uh, I'll be right back. You know what I just realized? We're probably not going to grab dinner tonight because I have an amazing steak uh, back at the house. It's like a probably like a 16 ounce steak. It's huge. Uh, so we're gonna do that. I got some uh, Indonesian tiger shrimp. So corn, steak, shrimp. Oh, it's going to be a very good dinner. So, you're going to see how I, uh, how I cook. I'm a good cook. I'm a very good cook. One thing that I'm super proud of. Oh, you know what? There's Wi-Fi here. So, I'm going to jump on that real quick and uh, figure out where I'm going. And I'll talk to you guys soon. One thing that is nice about walking through the, the underground is it's air conditioned. And we're getting to that point in the year where um, air conditioning comes in clutch big time. Because Japan gets incredibly hot. Holy vey. All right, talk to you soon. Oh my goodness. I just spent an hour walking around in Shinjuku Station just to end up where my girlfriend and I got off the train. So I'm in the completely wrong section, but I had to stop for a... God, I'm out of breath. I just stopped for a second to show you this ridiculously cool building. Check it out. Very cool. Okay, so... Now I need to find some Wi-Fi so I can figure out where I'm going. I'm going to continue walking around inside though because of the air conditioning. Good lord, it's hot out. It's about 28 degrees right now. Very hot. Maybe wearing really tight pants was not a good idea. Uh, okay, I finally figured out where I am, where I need to be, and how to get there. Uh, it took me about not wearing my watch today. Shoot! It took me about an hour and a half to find out where I am. Shinjuku Station is absolutely huge. So it's very easy to get lost in there. Either way, I'm coming up on the uh, beautiful, beautiful square. Let me uh, flip the camera around and I'll show you. I think you'll really enjoy the view. All right, here I am, guys. I'm glad that this part is pretty shady. Oh, look at the Pokemon cards up there. Yeah, Pokemon's huge here in Japan, obviously. So there is the Don Quixote that we gotta go to. That's where they had the really good sale. I doubt they're still having it, but it's worth a try. Beautiful area. All right, let's go to Don Quixote. Damn, I came all the way here. It's taken me like two hours to get here and uh, they don't have what I'm looking for. Shoot, <laughs> what a pain in the ass. Okay, well, you win some, you lose some. What can you do, really? All right, well, um, from here, I think I'm going to head back to Shinjuku Station, and uh, we'll jump on a train, and we'll head over to Akihabara. There is a game that I'm looking for that I thought would be a lot of fun to play on live stream because it's like a choose-your-own-adventure book game. Uh, it's a visual novel game, uh, but it's like a, a survival horror game. So I thought that game would be really, really fun to play live on camera and have you guys make the decision so i'm gonna head over there uh see if they have anything new down in akihabara did i cut myself at some point today yeah here shoot i'm gonna head over to akihabara and then afterwards i am going to uh go home and i'm gonna make a beautiful beautiful dinner and uh yeah it's gonna be a fun day it's gonna be a fun day before we head out of shinjuku i promised you guys i wanted to show you uh one of the arcades here uh, we'll take a walk around. We'll see some UFO catchers. Uh, they got some really cool stuff here. Let's go check it out. Kirby! You'll see they like to put a lot of food in uh, Japanese UFO machines. Look 
little wieners. Oh, I want this. It's a long body pillow, but it's just a sushi roll. Awesome. I can't spend any money on that stuff though. Ooh, spooky. Ooh, spooky. Yeah, so you are allowed to film in here. That's awesome. Let's go up a level and see what they've got upstairs. I uh, I don't have any change for playing arcade games today, unfortunately. Um, but still a pretty cool place. Let me show you its features. Oh, I got my hopes up there for a second. Oh, lots of coin pushers. I wonder if they have a Dragon Quest coin pusher. Mahjong, because everybody wants to come to the arcade and play Mahjong. What's over here? I think this is horse betting. Yeah, this is what I was talking about the other day in my uh, interview. You can do this horse betting, virtual horse betting. Very funny. Very cool stuff. All right, I'm gonna take a quick break. All right, guys, it seems that my smokes fell out of my butt pocket. So frustrating. Uh, let's take one more look at uh, one more floor, and then we'll head back to Shinjuku Station. But they've got some Mario cards here. I wanna show them. Mario Kart. Pretty cool. Oh, these candies are so good. Time to find a convenience store, and uh, oh man, I'm tired, man. It's really hot, but I'm glad that right now, damn it, I'm still not wearing my watch. Uh, right now, it's around five o'clock, so the sun is not at the highest. It's getting a little cooler, which is really nice. Um, yeah, it's a nice day. I just wanna say, guys, thank you so much for Oh shit, there's somebody behind me. Um, I just wanna say thank you so much for watching my stuff. It really means the world to me. Um, I never thought that I would ever have that kind of support. And uh, I just wanna take a moment to say I really appreciate it and uh, thank you. It means the world to me, you know? Um, I feel like a little superstar and you, you guys make it happen. I really appreciate it. Thank you for watching my live streams. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for giving me uh, words of advice. I really do appreciate it. They don't, the, the stuff you tell me definitely doesn't fall on deaf ears. So I just want to say thank you very much. Oh, you know what? Guys, if you're ever in Shinjuku, uh, come here. Shinjuku Beer Hall. It is such a great place because there's seven floors, seven floors of different restaurants. Here, let me show you. This place here. 
Shinjuku Beer Hall. There's seven floors of different restaurants and they have absolutely amazing, amazing food. They have this big display right out front. Uh, let me show you some of the pizzas. Yes, this pizza here, this salami pizza, I've had it like six or seven times since I've been here. And uh, oh my God, is it good. I can eat the entire thing by myself. Uh, but they've got lots of different stuff here. Basically any food that you could think of, they have here, whether it's uh, traditional Japanese food like this. Uh, they have German food. They have just a lot of good stuff. Just a lot of good stuff. So here's the pizzas. They've obviously got pastas and everything like that. And then here they've got different steaks, uh, hamburger, curry, Ginza Lion pizza, six kinds of cheese pizza. That sounds amazing. Good seafood. Yeah, really good stuff. Yeah, you definitely, definitely can't go wrong. Uh, you definitely can't go wrong eating there. It's a really good, really good place to eat. Guys, I wanna let you know, this video is sponsored. This video is sponsored by my friends back in my hometown, The Altered Nation. Guys, if you like really cool, unique clothing, if you like, uh, if you like uh, incense, crystals, candles, uh, band clothing, uh, band t yeah, band t-shirts. Um, they've got so many cool things. They're also a tattoo shop, a piercing shop. They've got all kinds of medical devices. They've got a grow shop in the in the uh, in the back there. Um, in Canada, it is legal to grow cannabis. So uh, if that's something that you're into, uh, they've got everything that you need. The uh, people that work there are awesome people, awesome people. I used to work there for quite a while, quite a long time, and uh, it was a great place to work. So guys, if you could show them some love, uh, I would really appreciate it. I'll leave their link in the description. Uh, Shane, the owner, thank you so much for uh, sponsoring the, the, the web series. I really, really appreciate it. Guys, please do me a favor, go check out his uh, website. He's got some really cool stuff on there. All right, guys, I need to find a convenience store and uh, then we're gonna hop back on the train and we're gonna go down to Akihabara. I also gotta find a bathroom immediately. <laughs> I guess you didn't need to know that though. All right, talk All to right, you soon. Now comes the long arduous task of trying to find JR13 out of like 800 different uh, train ways. I don't know what you would call them, train gates, yes. I have to find JR13, and it's gonna be tough. <laughs> I will get back to you when, uh, when I find it. You know what, I got super lucky. Um, I'm actually very, very close to, uh, to the train gate that I have to get onto. Uh, it actually, it's just right over here. Right here, it only took me about two minutes to find. So, bonus, 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 bonus. All right, let's see how far away, um, let's see how far away we have to go. Um, let's see, Yoyogi, Akihabara. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We got nine stops. All right, talk to you then. Very beautiful area. Look at the train. I love the trains here. So cool. And also the trains uh, here are so fast. So, so fast. Oh my. All right, everyone. So we made it to uh, Akihabara. Excellent station. Um, what we're going to do before we uh, go into like the video game section of Akihabara is we're going to go to that creepy vending machine corner and uh, grab some popcorn. Hopefully um, the... Yes, hopefully the popcorn machine is working and uh, that would be very cool because it's like an old machine probably from the 70s, maybe the 80s, maybe even the 60s. It's a really old popcorn machine and uh, it's very cool and we're going to go check that out and hopefully it's working. That was a lot of words to just say we're going to go get some popcorn at the haunted... Good lord, Kai. Alright guys, there's uh, like 100, 200 gachapon machines here. Do you think that they'll have what I'm looking for? I highly doubt it. Let's take a look. It says right on it, no filming. So 
Sorry guys, not too sure what's going on at uh, Akihabara Station, but something is definitely going on because there's police officers everywhere. Like 10, 15 I've seen so far and I've only been walking around for a minute or two. Yeah, I, I, I wonder what's going on. I wonder what's going on. I've never seen so many police officers here before. Very strange. Oh well. Okay, my friends, so we've made it to Akihabara. Now it is just a short walk over to the uh, popcorn vending machine. After that, we will head over to, uh, where are we gonna go? We're gonna go to uh, Super Potato. We're gonna go to Retro Game Camp. We're gonna do the usual. Oh my goodness, there's a huge amount of people over here. I wonder what they're doing. Very strange. I don't know if they're doing like a tour or anything. Let me flip the camera. Lots of people. I don't know, I don't know. Look how beautiful this area is, though. Very, very cool. Very cool, I love living here. I love living in Japan. It's so, so nice, and it's so different than Canada. Uh, so different than Canada. In so many wonderful ways. There's, a, like, obviously, I don't want to sugarcoat everything. There are negatives about, oh my goodness, look at that. There are definitely negatives about living in Japan. Uh, for one, the freaking uh, the crosswalk takes about 15 days for it to turn green. That's incredibly frustrating. Um, but overall, I love it here. I love it, love it, love it here. If I could make a living, like a good living here, um, I would live here all year round, right? Um, but I get healthcare in Canada. I get my medication paid for in Canada. Um, I get a lot of help with my health in Canada, so there are benefits to both of them, right? But it's nice to live here for six months of the year and then live back in Canada for six months of the year. Either way, look at this ridiculous little little thing I got going on here. God damn it. I'm 32 years old and I still get acne. All right, the uh, vending machine corner is just down this uh, just down this street here. Let's go get right, guys. The light is on. Is this thing working? Look how old it is. Is it working? The light's on. It seems like it probably is. Hold on one second. What sec. do you think, guys? Is the popcorn machine going to work? Is it going to work? Fingers crossed. Oh, look at that. Uh-oh. Oh, I burned myself like an idiot. Oh no. Oh, there it goes. Is it gonna work? Oh, it's working. Very excited, very excited. It only takes a little moment and my popcorn will be ready. comes there it is oh already oh Jesus that's hot excuse my language popcorn time worked all right so I know a really nice place near the river and I'm just gonna go stand there and eat my popcorn and then Video game time, video game time. Very excited, very excited. Oh, the string. Yeah, this is a beautiful area of, of Tokyo. I know I hang out here so often, um, but there's a reason why I'm here so often, because it's just awesome. All right, let me show you this view. Oh, the bus is in the way. everyone time to head into Akihabara it's gonna be a nice night I might even uh, throw ten bucks into the mystery vending machine we'll have to see we'll have to see if I don't find anything interesting today maybe I'll do it so I came over here because I saw another row of gachapon machines will they have it 
Will they have it? I'm very doubtful that they will. And they don't. Of course they don't. Dang it. I feel like an idiot. Oi, they smear. Okay, oh, there's a couple more of them over here. Anything? No, no, no. No. Shoot. <laughs> Dang it. Okay. Um, I'm going to walk around for a little bit. I'll find something interesting and uh, I'll let you know, all right? Oh, you know what sucks though? I'm all greasy from the, uh, I'm all greasy from the popcorn. And I brought floss with me because I bring floss everywhere I go. Um, and no matter how much I floss, I can't get the goddamn kernels out of my mouth. Fuck's sake. All right, continuing the adventure. Oh, big sun, big sun. Holy vey. Beautiful view though. All right, everyone. So I'm close to uh, Super Potato right now, but I want to give you a good look at these uh, at these anime girls on the screen up here. This is definitely Anime Central. Here I'm going to check out a lot of the uh, the cheaper kind of novelty uh, souvenir stores and. Uh, Look what I found again. <laughs> oh, funny, funny stuff. Okay, um, yeah, so if I find anything interesting in here, I will let you know. A lot of this is the same stuff though. I love the masks. I love the masks. I'm a big mask fan ever since, uh, ever since I played Majora's Mask back in 2001. Good Lord, big mask man. Okay, uh, sweet potatoes right over here. Let's go see if there's anything interesting. And hopefully it's not too busy in there, and um, I can actually do a little bit of filming. They, they don't really mind if you film in uh, Super Potato, which is which is a positive, always a positive. All right, I'll be right back. It's not super busy. Let me give you a good look at what the store looks like. All right, lots of fun. Got GameCube's, Wii's, Wii U's. Even a full Wii U is only a hundred bucks. Didn't do very well here. The Mega CD in the box. That's got to be three or four hundred dollars for sure let's see what the price is on this six hundred dollars yeah that's expensive good lord really cool stuff though here's the mega cd2 300 bucks saturns i would love to start a saturn collection but i don't know enough about the saturn mega drive 2 wow the mega drive is expensive they got Pokemon plush. Go to my favorite section real quick, which is the Famicom section and the Nintendo 64 section. Actually, now that I'm collecting for all three different systems, Super Famicom, regular Famicom, and uh, N64, this is a great place to hang out. However, however, as I said before, I really, really don't want to pick up too many more Famicom games. Um, because I want to leave more for the next time I come down, right? If I, I'm never going to complete a Famicom collection. I have no intention on that. There's over a thousand games for it, you know? Um, but out of all the games that I do want, I don't want to, I don't want to blow it, um, all in one trip, right? Because then it'll make the next trip, uh, not as fun for game hunting, right? And I love game hunting. But if there's something cheap, if there's something, uh... If there's something reasonable, like under five bucks, it looks kind of cool, I'll pick it up. Um, Super Potato's not really the place to find games for like five bucks, but see, even like this baseball game, a dollar. So there's, there's good stuff. But the problem is, a lot of it you have to look up. That's what I've learned big time. A lot of it you have to look up. Um, and you know what? If you are collecting for the uh, Famicom, there's a great YouTube channel called, um, shoot, I forget what he's called, but I'll, I'll leave him in the description. And uh, he has done a review of every single Famicom game there is. Every single one of them. Right now he's working on a review of every single Famicom Disk System game. Um, so what I would recommend is take a couple pictures of the, the Famicom games that you want. Um, let me show you something really quickly. Um, all Famicom games have this little, this little code. 
I don't know if you can see that. That's not, probably not a good example. Let me find one with a better, better code on it. Uh, so for example, here. So right up here, there's a code. So what you can do is you can just Google Famicom and then that code, and it'll bring up the name of the game and everything like that. And then find the name of the game and uh, search it on his channel. And then you can watch a full in-depth review of it and you can make sure that it's actually something that you would like to play. Um, because, you know, they say don't, don't judge a book by its cover, but you kind of have to, you kind of have to, because it's like, what is this? Oh, it looks like a space shooter, right? But this could very well be like an RPG that is full of text that you will never be able to read, you know? That's what, why, that's a big mistake that I made when I first started collecting for the Famicom. I would say 20 of the first 40 games that I bought for the Famicom were all RPGs that I can't play. So be careful with it and uh, check out his channel. I'm gonna continue looking for uh, Mortal Kombat. I doubt I will find it, but I'll keep looking. And if there's anything new for the N64, we'll take a look at it too. Stardust Suplex. I didn't know Cody Rhodes had a, had a Super Famicom game. That's really cool. Shoot. Oh look, it's not the bulls, it's the bills. <laughs> And look, in Japan, they're not the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They're just the, the Teenage Mutant... Oh, they are. The Mutant Warriors. Okay. It's in Europe. They're the Teenage Mutant Ninja Heroes or something like that. Um, I don't know where M is. I don't know where M is. When I was in here the other day doing a game hunt with uh, Kid Shuriken with Mad Panic Gaming, he showed me that I think it should be in this section here, but... Uh, I can't ever find it. Lots of Dragon Ball Z games, though. Tons of Dragon Ball Z games. One game that I see often, but it's a little too much for what I'd be willing to pay for it, considering the heavy censor cen censoring, is uh, the original Wolfenstein. They do have the Oh, that's cool. Bart's Nightmare. But it's $53. So expensive. I saw a box copy of that though for 160, so who knows. All right, let me look around. I'll figure something out. So we're out. in the N64 section now. Is this Parlor Pro? No. Um, we're in the N64 section now, and you gotta remember, just because the price is high on a game does not mean it's good quality, because look at who made this game. Titus. One of the very worst uh, publishers for the Nintendo 64. They made Carmageddon and they also made uh, Superman 64. This game is hot garbage. Um, but 87.78, really expensive. So just because you see something like, yeah, just because you see something that's super expensive does not necessarily mean that it's like an in-demand good game. You know, like this game, for example, Human Grand Prix, is a much, much better game than this. And it's, you know, eight times less. Um, you know what, though? I have got a ton of the N64 games. There's really not much box stuff that I'm looking for anymore because all of the box stuff that I want is out of my price range. It's out of my price range. And I would much rather spend, you know, $200 on 15, 20 games than I would on two games that are boxed. But if I find anything interesting, I will let you guys know. Extreme G for $21.78, that's a really good price because the boxed version is a couple hundred dollars. So to see that, that's like, a, that's like an end of the trip thing. If I still have some good money at the end of the trip, that'll definitely be a game that I pick up. Uh, let's see what we got here. Custom Robo. Wow, twenty-one seventy-eight. I got this game for two dollars once. That's ridiculous. Do they have the second one too? Yeah, they have the second one. I got this one for one dollar. Yikes. Alright guys, before I leave, I'm just gonna take a quick look at the oh what is this? It's got Ultraman and Kamen Rider on it. How much is that? Twelve bucks? A little too much. Uh, I'm gonna take one more look at the uh, Game Boy stuff, but I've got a hot take for you guys. Hot take. I think the Game Boy is crap. 
<laughs> I'm talking the original Game Boy. The Game Boy Color had some pretty good games on it, but I'm telling you, hot take, I think that the Game Boy is pretty crappy. Pretty crappy. Because you gotta remember, it's an underpowered NES, or an underpowered Famicom. So, if you think Famicom games are primitive, Game Boy games are... are like, they're made to play for like 15 20 minutes you know other than pokemon and you got to remember pokemon came out at like the end of the game boy you know um i just don't really think that the game boy had that many good games i mean if you think about it probably had off the top of my head i could probably name like 20 good games for it and it's like wow that sounds great but the game boy had like a thousand games made for it right and i don't know i just i just I've never really liked the Game Boy. I buy Game Boy games specifically for like my streams when, the, like just to play bad games, you know, because it's, it's fun to play bad games. Like for example, I played, I played this game on stream uh, and it was terrible. It was terrible. It was one of the worst games I've ever played in my life, <laughs> you know? So if you guys agree with me, let me know. If you disagree with me, let me know. Um, but I just, I just don't think the Game Boy was that great. The Game Boy Color got better, you know, because the Game Boy Color definitely had more power to it, and, uh, it wasn't in that green tone, but I don't know. I, I just, I just never was into the Game Boy. Game Boy Advance, completely different, but the Game Boy, nah, I just wasn't a fan. Oh, yeah. Alright, my friends, no luck in there. No luck in there. There's really only a couple, um, games I'm looking for anyway. So, um, next I think we're just gonna hang out and, uh, look at, like, the, the cheap souvenir stores. I really like, uh, I really like seeing, like, cheap gadgets, you know? One thing that I enjoy when I'm back in Canada, a couple times a week I will go to, uh, the dollar store. And, uh, we have a, we have a dollar store in Canada that's called Dollarama. And it has products that are between a dollar and four dollars. So, um, if you go down to, like, the electronics section, they sometimes have, like, cool things in there that you, that you wouldn't expect. Um, for example, I got a tripod for my camera, um, at the dollar store, you know, so I enjoy looking at the, these cheaper, these cheaper kind of bootleg everything stores. So I'm going to do that for a little bit, and if I find something cool, I'll let you know. And then, uh, where are we going next? We're going to go to Trader next. Yeah, we're gonna go to Trader next, and then, uh, yeah, we're just gonna hang out tonight. I'm very excited to show you the steak that I got because it's ridiculously large. Ridiculous. All right, good stuff. It's a nice day, guys. It's a nice day, and I'm really glad to, uh, I'm really glad to be able to hang out with you. You know, it, it means a lot to me. It means a lot to me to, uh, to do this stuff. It's, it means a lot to share. It means, uh, yeah, it's really fun for me. It's really fun. I really hope that you enjoy my content. If you do, guys, consider supporting me on Patreon. Um, I have some great rewards on there. I don't, uh, I have, uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm all nervous when I talk about that stuff. Try supporting me on Patreon. It would uh, really help out the channel. I would really, really appreciate it. And I've got some great rewards on there. If you're looking for, uh, some uh, exclusive Pokemon stuff. I've got that in one of the rewards. If you're looking for uh, some of my signed photography, let me know, guys. Uh, everything from Patreon goes right back into the channel. So uh, if you've ever wanted to support the channel in any way, get your name in the credits and stuff, I'd really appreciate it. And uh, I'll talk to you guys uh, soon. I hope that you join. Oh, I have one last thing to say. I am very, very, very grateful for the people at Bic Camera. Hold on, let me flip the camera around real quick. Here's Bic Camera off in the distance. And uh, I had a problem the other day and they really fixed it and it was a huge Basically challenge. what had happened is I bought, um, I bought a translator. You guys saw that in like my first vlog. I bought a translator that um, was very, very, very helpful for me and Megumi, right? And not only just me and Megumi, but me in general being in, in Japan. And what happened was because I couldn't read the instructions, um, and, and, and guys, read the instructions. <laughs> because I couldn't read the instructions because they were in Japanese, um, I was plugging that thing into my 40 watt fast charger, 
right? And it says right in the instructions, use the, the charging brick that's provided. Do not like overcharge kind of thing like that. So after about a month of using it, the thing completely did, was destroyed. You know, the battery was destroyed. It would not turn on or anything like that. And I had lost the receipt. And uh, so for about three, four weeks, me and Megumi, we didn't have that translator. One thing though that that taught us was we got along fine. You know, we, we communicated absolutely fine during that period. So the translator kind of helped, but it's not necessary for us. Um, but we went back to Big Camera and I didn't have a receipt or anything like that. And the guy was nice enough to just give me a brand new one. And the thing is that translator was $350, you know, so it wasn't a cheap thing. And uh, he scanned my, my passport, but I think that it's because Magumi's so pretty. I think, I think he was trying to impress my girlfriend. Um, but he was very nice. I just want to say thanks to the people at Big Camera. Um, that was a huge help because uh, as I said, it was $350. Uh, so the fact that he just returned it without the receipt and gave us a brand new one, that was very, very nice of him. So, thanks. Okay, continuing on, I'll talk to you guys soon. Hey guys, I just want to, uh, I just want to talk a moment about overcoming your fears and, uh, accomplishing your dreams, you know? And it might sound so cliche, but if you guys know me, uh, if you've been a follower of the channel for a long time, you know that I suffered from extreme addiction. Um, I wouldn't even call it regular addiction. I would call it extreme addiction. I was passing out drunk in the streets. I was getting robbed. I was getting beaten up. Horrible things. Guys, I want to let you know that I'm okay. You know, and you can be too. That's what this whole series is about this whole sober living series you know when i started this channel it was just to document my recovery it was just to document my recovery give tips and advice about helping and then i discovered that you know there's a lot more to sobriety than just talking about sobriety and so i moved on to vlogging and a big reason why I did that was because I wanted to show you guys that if you are somebody who's suffering from an extreme, whether that's extreme anxiety or extreme addiction or extreme depression or anything like that, and you feel like you'll never get out of it, I promise you, you can. You can. I can't promise you how to do it. You know, for me, I had to hit absolute rock bottom and I was about to commit a horrible act of violence towards myself um, that would have been national news. And once I got the ability to do that, I immediately realized that I had hit rock bottom, you know? Um, and then I, I finally accepted the, the help that my grandmother offered me. My, my grandmother had offered to send me to rehab for a long time. And my rehab was about $16,000. And I know that a lot of you guys don't have the means to do that, right? I was incredibly lucky, but you gotta remember guys, I don't come from money. I don't come from money at all. My grandmother essentially spent the rest of her life savings sending me to rehab and it worked, you know? But before she did that, I was about to commit something horrific. And I'm just, I'm just trying to say like, maybe it, maybe it comes down to you guys having to hit rock bottom before you can actually get help, you know? Um, and that's okay. That's okay. It's okay to hit rock bottom because the thing is, once you've hit rock bottom, you can only go up from there. You, you can only go up from there. Once you hit rock bottom, every little accomplishment that you make brings you up and brings you higher and higher and higher on that ladder, you know? So I just wanna let you guys know that if you have dreams that you think you'll never accomplish, you can do it. Uh, for me, my huge dream was to, to come to Japan, but my dream was just to, to visit Japan, 
you know? I just wanted to go on one trip to Japan and I was only planning on coming for maybe two weeks, right? Because that was the only thing that my brain could even fathom. I could only ever imagine coming to Japan for like two weeks. And uh, I've been here for like a year now, you know? And I just want to let you guys know that it was hard to beat my addiction. But I truly believed at one point in my life that I would never be happy again and I would never be able to function again without being loaded. And I got over it and now I'm living my dream. I have a beautiful girlfriend. I have a beautiful apartment. I'm living in Japan. I recently interviewed one of my inspirations for this entire thing. Like I'm moving up in the world and I just wanna let you guys know you can too. I promise, I promise. If you need any help, if you need somebody... Sorry guys, it cut out there. I ran out of storage. Um, as I was saying, if you need a friend, if you need someone to talk to, if you just need somebody to be there for you, shoot me an email. I would love to be able to help. As I just said, I am running out of data, so unless I find something super interesting, uh, the next time you see me, I will be heading back home and uh, we're gonna cook up an amazing dinner. I finally found it, but I can't afford it. Damn it. All right, my friends. So I've had a really nice day here in Akihabara and in Shinjuku. Uh, I did find Mortal Kombat, but it's 40 bucks and uh, I can't spend that right now at all. Uh, me and my girlfriend have a trip coming up to uh, Kyoto and Osaka, and uh, I need to save my money for that. I can't tell my girlfriend, oh, we can't do this activity because I needed to buy another video game. You know what I mean? So hopefully by the end of the trip, I'll be able to get it, and uh, that's about it. Other than that, right now, I'm heading back to the apartment, and we are going to make an awesome, awesome, awesome dinner. Talk to you guys. All right, guys. One more shot before I leave. I want to show you the beautiful square down here. It's very beautiful. I am planning to come back around Christmas time. So I would love, love, love to see what this city looks like, um, well, at Christmas time. All right. I'm going home, I'll see you guys soon. All right, my friends, so I am home now, and look at this dinner. Let me flip the camera around so you can get a better, uh, so you can get a better look. Yeah, so I've got a beautiful steak here, cooked rare. I've got corn covered in butter and steak seasoning. And then over here, bunch of uh, carbonara pasta. So guys, I'm gonna eat my dinner now. I really, really had a lot of fun today. Thank you so, so, so much for watching my videos. I really, really appreciate it. If you want to support me, um, consider joining my Patreon. It would really help. And uh, other than that, guys, I hope you have a wonderful day. I will talk to you soon. And uh, yeah, have a, have a wonderful night. Thank you so much for watching my stuff. Bye. <music>